In this video I'll be demonstrating how to program an EEPROM. I'll be using a TL866 EEPROM programmer, such as this, to program an AMD 29F040B electrically erasable PROM, like this, with a handful of ROM images from a, Harle a Harlequin Spectrum clone. The TL866 is available online uh, for around £40 from the usual suppliers, Amazon and eBay. Um, the software that accompanies it is available as a free download. Please note the software may need to flash the TL866 before it can be used. So before I start, I need to plug my device into the USB port of my PC. There we go. And now I need to select the chip. Select my IC. So launch the software. Select the IC by clicking on this button. As you can see, there are thousands of supported chips from hundreds of manufacturers. Uh, so I'll need to select the right one now. Uh, the device name is usually printed on top of the chip or available in the documentation that came with it. Uh, mine's a an AMD part, so I can pre-select that here. Still lots of chips to choose from. Uh, let us narrow that down by putting it into the search devices box. There we go. And it's the AM29F040B and it's in the DIP32 package, uh, the traditional chip package, like that. Select the chip. So once the chip's been selected, I can just double check this now by clicking on device info. That's here. And it tells me the manufacturer and the IC type and parameters. So in this case I can confirm that the file size is correct, the flash size is 512k which is that number of bytes and it helpfully pops up a graphic on how to insert it into the ZIF socket. So in this case that's the lever that you pop down when you're locking the chip in on the, on the programmer. Chip goes in at the top near the lever and the chip top is marked by the notch and pin one by the dimple. So go back to the flash view. I'm going to insert my chip in the way described. Let's double check that. There we go. And pop the lever down there. Next I'm going to load the data in off the chip. Um, I do that by selecting the device menu and then click on read. And that will read the data in off the chip into the software's buffer. And click on the read button here. Progress bar, read finished. Uh, this has already got data on the chip because I've used it already in the Harlequin. Um, I'm in the process of reprogramming the new ROM that I'm trying out. Um, so you can see here, the uh, address zero, we've got what looks suspiciously like a Sinclair ROM with uh, Spectrum keywords there, ink, paper, flash and so on. The first thing I need to do then, before I program this, is clear the device. Uh, and I can do that by selecting Erase from the menu. Let's erase the device. So whilst that's erasing, it's worth pointing out that it's only possible to erase electrically erasable PROMs. If it's a standard EEPROM, you'll need to erase it using a, a UV EEPROM eraser. Uh, that looks like it's erased. So now if I read the device in, it should look blank. 
There we go. It's full of FF. Doesn't erase it with zeros, it erases it with ones. So each byte is populated with an FF. I think we can do a blank check as well. So let's just do a blank check on this device now. Memory is empty. There we go. So we're good to go now to program it. So the way that this works is you load the data into the software's buffer here. Uh, and once you've loaded all of the data into the buffer, you then write that data to the PROM. Uh, my EEPROM is 512k long, and I need to treat, treat it as eight banks of 64k for the Harlequin. So I need to load each ROM into the beginning of each 64k bank. So let's start off with the 48k Spectrum one, which I want to put in bank zero. Uh, there we go. I've helpfully arranged these in the banks that I want numbered left on the left hand side here. So the 48k ROM is a 16k ROM. Let's open that. And you've got to make sure if you're loading multiple files in the buffer that you disable clear buffer when loading the file. Otherwise, when you load subsequent ROMs in, it will clear the buffer, undoing the work you've done previously. So I want that to go into address zero. Let's load that in. It's a binary file, I know that, because I've got that from uh, that particular file from an emulator. Intel hex is a, a text format for storing um, ROM images. So that's loaded that into address zero. And remember, it's not loaded it onto the EEPROM yet, just into the buffer. Uh, the next ROM, we want to go into bank uh, hex 10000. So if I scroll down, I need it to be here exactly, oh, just gone past it, here. So the way we do that is we open the file again, select the second ROM we want to load in. This one's 32k, so it'll take up half of the 64k bank that's allocated to it. Open that up. Uh, and that needs to go into this address. 100. Oh, oh. remembering to set that to disable so we don't clear the previous ROM we've loaded uh, into the buffer. So there we go, let's just double check that. There we go, so that's loaded it into address 10000. And I think that looks like a ROM as well. There we go, more keywords. Uh, and we just repeat for the rest of the ROMs that we want to put into the EEPROM. So I'll do that now very, very quickly. So plus two ROM needs to go into address 20000. Don't clear the buffer. And the next ROM I'm going to put in is a plus three ROM. That's 64k, so it'll fill its buffer. Open that. Give me a second to load off my network drive. That's going into there. 30000. Don't want to clear the buffer. What's the next one? ZX81 emulator on. Let's load that one up. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a video article on that at some point. It's a ZX81 emulator that runs on a Spectrum. I'll put links to the uh, website at the bottom of this uh, video. So let's load that to address 5000. What's the next one? Another one, BBC Basic ROM. This is the one that I'm trying to test at the moment. 
because the original BBC Basic ROM didn't work on the Harlequin. Um, so I've modified the ROM by manually editing the hex to hopefully fix the issue. And uh, with a bit of luck, we can get that fired up on hardware. But it's fine in an emulator. I think there's something peculiar about the Harlequin that's stopping it from working. So let's load that into Backbank 6. There we go. And the final one is a diagnostic ROM. And that's going into Bank 7. So I've got all of the ROMs I want uh, loaded up into the buffer. So let's just double check. It looks plausible. So we should have a ROM was at 1000, which we have. 2000, which we have. Bank 3. There we go. And bank 4 should be empty. It is. Bank five looks like it's got data in. There we go. Bank six should have a ROM in. It does this is the BBC Basic ROM. I could have actually edited the um, ROM in here if I'd known the address before burning it. It is possible to actually edit the data in in here, but I decided I needed a hard copy anyway on the drive. And there should be a diagnostic ROM in Bank Seven. Scroll down. As the diagnostic ROM in bank seven. Okay, we're good to go. Let's program it. So we do that by going to the device menu again and program. Oh, it looks like it erases anyway. Maybe the erase step's unnecessary. Programming the code memory. And verifying. There we go, done. Job's good. Now I'll just show you the verify step. Um, this is handy for checking a ROM or an EEPROM that is suspected of being faulty. So the way you do that is you would put a known good ROM into the EEPROM programmer, read it into the buffer, or get the file with the ROM data in there and read it into the buffer and then insert the suspected chip into the programmer and select verify. If the chip's good, the verify should pass. If the chip has got any fault electrically or with the data within, it will fail. So hopefully this will pass. We know it's passed, it passed earlier. So that's telling me that the data on the ROM is exactly the same, it matches the data in the buffer. And that's it, programming an EEPROM in a nutshell. So the next step is to eject the ROM, which I'm going to do now. And test it. Thank you for watching.